I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty two Kia Carnival SX without launch control. It's all right. Horsepower and torque. 290, 262 pound feet of torque from a 3.5 liter V6. So this is Kia's new minivan, which is disguised as an SUV because a lot of people hate the looks of minivans. Yeah, so depending on what angle you look at it, it looks more or less like an SUV or a minivan. And what's the competition for this? That would be the Honda Odyssey, the Chrysler Pacifica, and the Toyota Sienna. But this only comes in front wheel drive where those ones have an all wheel drive option. Yeah, and some of them even have hybrids as well. And what's the starting price of the Kia Carnival? It actually starts at 32,100 US dollars. And if you're shopping for a new Kia Carnival, click the True Car link in the top right corner for discounted price offers. And if you really like minivan slash SUV reviews, consider subscribing and definitely thumbs up. And if you really like sports car reviews, consider subscribing and thumbs up because we do that too. Double thumbs up. So what would you like to talk about first, Jacob? The looks or all the features on the inside? All the features on the inside, Yuri. We are going to start off with the middle row, which has two captain's chairs. And these captain chairs, when you fold down the very back row, can slide all the way back and super recline. Yeah, so this is basically built around chauffeuring the second row passengers in extreme luxury because you can fully recline them and get foot rests, kind of like a Maybach. You actually have more room in here than you did in the Maybach because in the Maybach fully reclined, you still hit the front seat. However, I actually don't have any headroom in here for some weird reason when the seat is in its normal position. Yeah, even my wife complained about that, which was like kind of surprising. Yeah, because this has been your long-term tester, so you've actually had like a month with this. Yeah, doing a lot of baby stuff and family stuff with this to see how it competed with all my other long-term testers, which included a Pacifica. Yeah, so this also has peasant blockers, which have been fantastic for the baby, I assume. Yes, yeah, very important. And then we've got only one sunroof back there, not like a full moon roof, but it's cool because it can fully open. So if you're an adult reclining back there, you know, having a snoozer, you could also look up at the sky too. And when you open the side doors, you can actually move these seats side to side and forward and back. So it actually makes getting into the third row a pain. Yeah, the best way to do it is to slide both seats to their most outside position and then you kind of slide in through the middle or you can slide the seat into the center and then lean over and then move the electronic backrest all the way forward, which takes a lot of time. But considering they prioritize the middle stuff, I understand that's how they had to do it. Yeah, and if you don't want these super luxurious seats back there, you actually have to go for a trim below this and then you'll kind of miss out on other features where you do get normal seating back there. So it's a little weird how they position this. And then there's also an optional entertainment unit you can get back here for screens on the back of these seats, but we don't have that, but you can get YouTube and Netflix streaming through apps through that, so that's pretty awesome. And then third row room is actually pretty tight on my head. I would not want to spend any time back there actually, surprisingly. Not as good as a Pacifica, but the way folding all the seats down and everything is pretty cool. It's a handle instead of electronic, but because of that, we have like a ton of room behind the back row. So we kind of had like a stow and go type thing. Yeah, it's a st definitely stow and go, but like it's such a huge gap there. So there's tons of room. And then if we fold it all down, we should do the box test. One, two, three, four, five, six to fill up the middle row since these seats don't fold all the way forward or anything. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and with a little bit of creative box shuffling, we've got 21 and 22. Get your own box on patreon.com slash the straight pipes. And I feel like that's pretty much everything with the back besides the fact that if this person needed more room, I can control that right here. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> let's, let's put it back. More room for Jacob's legs. That is definitely Korean luxury style. Yeah, they all have that on like all their Genesis and everything. Exactly. So now moving into the front, or should we do looks before the front? Let's do looks. Let's do the looks. Starting with the front end, I think this looks amazing. The headlights are so cool. The DRLs look fantastic. Yeah, it's a very cool design. And then we have our headlights and high beams next to it separately. And then we almost have like an AMG style pin grill, but like a little bit different. It's it's a very cool grill, way cooler than what I would expect on a minivan. And then up at the front, we've got a different Kia badge, the new style one, which looks cool. And I guess this also is not considered a minivan. Right, this is a MPV, because if you call this a minivan, nobody's gonna buy it apparently, because people really don't like to buy minivans, they want SUVs. Multi-purpose vehicle. Yes. But overall, front end, 
looks amazing. They did a great job of disguising a minivan as an SUV. And now moving on to the side, we've got some very nice body lines, but one very important body accent. Yes, the one that allows for the sliding door. Well, what I'm actually talking about is this cool chromey satin thing that goes along with this cool texture, which also mimics this texture we have on the inside on the dashboard. It's a very cool accent piece that makes it look completely different than everything else and a lot more SUV-ish. Yeah, so that part definitely looks cool, but from the side is where you can tell it's a minivan, obviously. But I think it still is somewhat SUV disguised. And then with this paint, it does look really nice. Then we have black wheels to match it and make it look more sporty. And since we have the top trim, we do have some pretty big wheels on it. So it does look pretty cool with these wheels. And then my favorite part of this wheel and tire combo is the design of the Continental recommended tire, the Cross Contact RX. It pops so hard. And if you've got Continental tires on your car, take a picture, tag us on Instagram, hashtag the Conti pipes, and we'll share it to our stories. Who's holding the camera? <laughs> and moving around to the back, we've got some very interesting tail lights. Like they kind of look digital-ish. Like I, I like what they did here. They kind of come up and around all the way across. It's an interesting way to do tail lights to go all the way across, but our turn signals are down at the bottom, which we kind of don't like. But I guess, you know, with the whole trunk opening, it, you kind of have to do something like that. Yeah, and then we don't have any fake exhaust or anything like that, so nothing to get angry about. Should we listen to it from the outside? I don't think. Oh, think from the outside. the outside. And with that trunk lid, we do have an automatic close operation. So if you have the key in your pocket, you'll stand there and it'll kind of beep at you. And when you walk away, it'll automatically close. But if you don't want that to happen, you can click the automatic close off button. But say you have the key in your pocket and you're there and then someone else is there doing something and you walk away, it'll close on them if they don't push that button. Because they're going to hear the beeps and they have like, to know what what's happening. What is this? What is this? Yeah. Apparently, you can also walk up to the sides of the minivan, stand there for three seconds, and then the side door will also open. Yeah, but I prefer the kick to open method for the trunk and the side instead of the waiting Kia Hyundai method. Yeah, but it is cool that they have that because, I mean, you'd be holding their, your car seat or whatever for like three seconds just waiting for it to open. Okay, let's talk about more child-related car seat stuff with you behind the wheel. And sending it. Brake boost, front wheel drive, burnout. It's not bad off the line. It's like, it's like just dad fast. Yeah. The, the problem with this car, driving it when you're already up to speed, shout out Donut Media, but when you're at like 80, 100 and you're on the highway and you're cruising, you floor it, there's nothing. That's kilometers an hour, by the way. Yes. The, there's nothing there. It's just, it's dead. It's kind of like the Telluride and the Palisade. Like once you're going, there's not much power. Okay. Back to the back seat stuff real quick before the handling stuff. When you put your child seat in, there's a couple cool things you can do. You can slide the seats closer. So if you're sitting next to your baby, you can get closer to the baby without having to scooch into like a middle seat. And then you can also slide your seat farther back so that if it's a rear facing seat, you can see the baby without having to lean back. And I can also see the baby through the infotainment. Push that star button on your steering wheel. We've got our rear view, which you can see everything, but unlike the Chryslers, we can't see the baby's face in the rear facing child seats. So I think Chrysler does get the head up. I can zoom in with pinch to zoom though. Yeah, but you can't see the face. Okay, so back to actually sending this minivan. Yes, it's a minivan. Everybody get over yourselves. Eight speed auto shifts pretty smooth. It's not the fastest. There's a lot of downshift lag kind of expected, but you do have a couple drive modes. I am in sport mode. However, if I actually own this, I would probably never drive in sport mode. No, I, I never drove in sport mode. No, this, this isn't one of those. But we got cool transitions through all our drive modes. It's just normal, good, modern Hyundai Kia Genesis stuff. And we do have the full digital display instead of the analog tack, which is a lower trim option. And the steering is nice and light, kind of what you expect from something like this. And the suspension is pretty smooth. I don't think it's as smooth as even like the Chrysler Pacifica, but it is really, really good. Yeah, it's nice. Nothing to complain about. No, and nothing to complain about either on the highway except the speed, but with the lane keep assist and the adaptive cruise. Yeah, we got highway driving assist and it works very, very well. And seating position, it's actually pretty good for me. I can rest my elbows here, but missing from what we would expect in a minivan, we would not expect this in an SUV. We don't have any like armrest here. Yeah, like we, this is your armrest. We need proper captain shares armrest in here. Like I'm supposed to have that comfort minivan thing. Like for me, it's it's too much of a stretch. And then I can't even like reach this tuning button without leaning forward. Oh, yeah, I then see. It's just, it's not what I expect out of a minivan. Like the Pacifica and the Odyssey had that good, good, good would seat. You, would you expect this out of an SUV? This is very SUV to me. And then I would expect more compartments out of a minivan where like I got like, like barely anything here. Yeah, yeah no, you're right. But these seats are really comfortable, like very, very well padded. Yeah, no issues with the seats, just 
friggin' armrests. And not that anyone that's gonna buy this will probably ever do. I'm gonna send in the cliche corner. Uh, it's actually not bad. You can almost feel like some brake torque vectoring going on through there. Like It's like a big, stupid hatchback. Yeah, like it's breaking <laughs> the inside wheel. You can feel it. Dude, this with, oh, there we go. This with all wheel drive, this would rip. This with just more power in front wheel drive would be fun. It would be fun. Probably not better, but yeah, like fun. like the Odyssey was pretty much front wheel drive with more power. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty good. The suspension is actually not bad at all for handling. And then other materials and stuff on the inside. So I mentioned that we did have this little material. I really like it. How about this other material? What is it? It's like a gloss black. Yeah, I think I've seen it on like a piano before. Uh, this is the worst. Uh, there's so much gloss black in here, especially for a minivan. Yes, it's supposed to be luxurious, trying to be luxurious. But this is like a kid hauler at the it's end a of the day. It's a booger mobile. Yeah, like, come on. You're gonna get a, is... They got piano black in, in the back there, too. Like, dogs are going to be like... <laughs> it's everywhere. It all up. Yeah, like, whoever wants to lick these panels, like, this is... Ugh, it's gross, man. Like, just too much gloss black. But then other stuff up here. Do you like this big infotainment screen? It's nice having the super wide Apple CarPlay. I do like it. And even though it's two screens, it looks like it's very well integrated. Yeah, and I don't like the satellite radio bump thing, but... Uh, thank you, Nina at Satellite Radio, for sending me this Good Vibrations Beach Boys channel shirt. It's my favorite radio station. It's going to be done by the time this video goes out because Beach Boys station always ends when summer ends. Yeah, thank God. So these capacitive touch buttons for the infotainment below it totally suck. I hate that stuff. Yeah, like give me hard buttons, especially because this is a kid hauler. The last thing you want to do is be tired and try to find your radio with your volume, like anything like climate control related. Yeah, in our climate control, we've got little flapping paddles that go up and down for temperature, but everything else is capacitive touch buttons, so it is kind of gross. And then we also have three USB ports down here. We actually have a lot of USB ports throughout the entire car, and then we also have a wireless charger. Yeah, we got a normal shifter. We got our drive mode back there. We've got our actual hard buttons for our camera parking assist and our heated cooled seats our 360 camera is very good you can see the front wheel back wheel and everything so you don't actually mess up the sidewalls on these awesome continental tires that's right and then our cup holder huge fail this small cup sinks all the way to the bottom but jacob recently got into 3d printing so you know what we did uh, i made a new design for a cup holder to solve this problem so let's hope it's done by the time we get finished this video and see if it fits so this is the small cup definitely a fail jacob what have you printed for me i've printed the tsp cup fix this is a prototype don't judge me on this oh ho, ho, ho. yeah so i wasn't too happy with how version one turned out i went ahead and did version two and I still wasn't happy with that. Did version three as a trial, got a little better, but then I figured out some of my problems with version four. Finally, I had to modify the straight pipes logo and here is the final 3D printed version. It is perfection. Look at that. Now you can solve your own problems. I will upload this to some sort of service online. You can download it. If you have a 3D printer, you can print it yourself and solve your own problems in your own Kia. Let me know how I did. 3D printing. Great job, Jacob. Well, thank any, you. Any 3D printing sponsors, hook us up. We'll make all kinds of cool car stuff. Uh, I'm just getting into it. I don't really know what I'm doing, but apparently I solved one problem with it already. And I don't have one yet, so send me a 3D printer. But the one thing that I really like about this cup holder setup, and a lot of manufacturers are now catching on to this, is this little cell phone slot in the middle, because there's another one back here as well. I really like that, because I like placing my phone there when it's not wireless charging, because I'm never wireless charging, because it's always plugged in for yeah. Apple CarPlay. The worst thing about wireless chargers is it just like heats up your phone and like doesn't Pretty charge much. fast enough. I feel like it's good for the passenger, so that the driver can just have their phone plugged in. But if you're a passenger, you'd probably be on your phone because driving around is boring. I guess. And let's check the visors. They gotta pass. Yeah, they have to. Three, two, one. Full pass, good job. And then a couple other things. This has remote start on the key fob. Oh, thank God. And when I get into the car, it stays started. That's great. Because it's not like wirelessly through your phone. Yeah, it's perfect. And it was really good for cooling the car and getting it started before you throw your child in there. Cause like, man, throw your child into like a hot car and then like you roll down all the windows and start driving. You're like, come on, get the temperature good. It's like yeah. kind of sketchy. No, I know. I'm totally about that now. So I feel like that's pretty much everything with the new Kia Carnival, which used to be called the Kia Sedona. I think it's time we get to the price. The cheapest model that you can get is $34,795. Canadian. And this one is $48,595. Kind of in line with all the other minivans. They all are kind of expensive these days. Yeah, and this is less money than a Telluride, which kind of makes sense because they want people to buy this. They, there needs to be a reason for them to buy this over the Telluride. But like a lot less than that like Pacifica that was super luxurious that I had. Right, Remember a lot how, less. How nice that was? Yeah, yeah. But like these second row seats, as a adult, are pretty awesome. But but realistically, who do you care about that much to buy this to put them in the backseat of a minivan instead of buying a somewhat luxury SUV kind of thing? I feel like if I was Drake before I was famous, 
that's who I would want to be in the back. <laughs> Drake in a minivan. <laughs> Dude, back here, before you get like into Maybach levels of riches. You can't roll out to a concert in a minivan. You, you just, nobody sees you, that's the thing. <laughs> You're, you fly under the radar, this is very safe. You're gonna be doing your Instagram photos and be like, yo, is that a carnival? And you're like, oh shit, they know. <laughs> no, no. So looks wise, this over the Sienna, Odyssey, or the Pacifica? Yeah, I would say looks wise over all of them. Looks wise, I would take the other ones over this because I like the minivan look. I think there's van culture on Instagram, which makes minivans look super awesome. Yeah, van culture does like Pacificas. Like they're they're about Pacificas. Like I've even seen old Sedonas. You throw a roof rack on them, dump them. Like they actually look really, really awesome. And overall, I really enjoyed my time in that Honda Odyssey from years ago because the VTEC van, V6, that sound, you can hear the crossover. I just go that one just because of the engine. I'm feeling that too, and I remember that had really good armrests. I feel like the cool things in this aren't the cool things that I want in a minivan. And you normally really like a lot of features that Kias have. Yeah, but like with all these capacitor buttons, I'm kind of getting turned off. But I think they did a great job of appealing to people who hate minivans, who need minivans. And if you're shopping for a new Kia Carnival and you live in the United States, click the True Car link below. There's a discount when using the Straight Pipes link. You can also shop for used Kias using True Car. And if you live in Canada, there's a Car Help Canada link below. So let us know in the comments below, what should Yuri actually buy for his minivan hauler? Let me know because I'm very interested. I'm kind of pushing him one direction, but I want to know what the comments say. Yeah, this is kind of my last long-term tester, so I probably got to go buy something. I'm thinking the VTEC van, the, yeah. old, the old Odyssey. You could probably pick one of those up for a decent price now. That, that's kind of what I'm trying to push on And here. I kind of like that one screen in the middle preloaded with stuff instead of like two screens behind. Yeah, if anyone wants to hook up any like intakes and exhaust for that, thing for Yuri, like, let me know, because uh, I think that thing with an intake. Yeah, Honda dealerships in Toronto, I'll give you a free shout out. You sell me a van for a good price. <laughs> I'm going to use Sherry. You got to use Car Help Canada. Sherry Car Help Canada to hook up that deal. There you go. And for everyone left at the end of the video, you're our number one fans. You're our best subscribers. Share these videos with your friends. Leave a thumbs up and a really nice comment. Thank you.